Hello, hello. Welcome everyone to another amazing Thunderbird live hacking, live streaming, live designing, whatever is going to happen today, whatever it's going to be. Uh, today is a beautiful sunny day in Vancouver, Canada. How's the weather in your area? Uh, it snowed last night, so everything is white around here, but now it's kind of warmish. I mean, six degrees, so I wouldn't call it warm, but at least it's not raining, it's not snowing. All the snow, it's melting, it's turning into just slush, and it's gross, it's disgusting. It's very hard to walk, <laughs> but yeah, it's winter for you. Uh, how's everybody doing? Welcome to this um, Thunderbird live hacking session. This is the ninth life hacking session that we've been doing, that I've been doing, but we've been doing it together. In this session, we are going to see a bunch of different things. I have a couple of bugs that I need to take care of, uh, but also I want to show you the progress of the redesign uh, of the new account hub, like the account creation, the email wizard creation, and all these other uh, beautiful things. Um, oof. Hello everyone, hello everyone in the chat, Danny is already here, I was talking with Avery's before, uh, it's Sunday minus 12, <laughs> Montreal, that's Montreal for you man. Um, I apologize in advance if this live streaming is gonna feel like kind of slow or sluggish, like the snow outside, because I have a massive headache, like probably have a migraine, it's very hard to look at the screen right now. You can see like my eyes are mm, uh, almost closed. But yeah, man, it's the show business, which you gotta like, you gotta go on and gotta move it. So yeah, um, show business. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, moving on. Let's switch to this beautiful view. So. Uh, a couple of views probably already uh, know these, uh, but I shared a blog post recently. I wrote another blog post after probably two years <laughs> since writing uh, the previous one. Oh, this is January 14, 2020, and then this is February. One year, almost one year a month of difference between the, 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 the most recent blog post. Um, I wrote these about my experience of working at Thunderbird. I've been working uh, on Thunderbird for two years now, like full time on Thunderbird. And I had a bunch of different experiences, some good, some bad, uh, some some shocking <laughs> first impressions. And I wanted to put them down in writing. I wanted to share my uh, thought process and my first approach, especially because I was hired initially as a like mostly yes, as a developer, but also because I'm also a designer. So my initial objective was to, we need to make Thunderbird beautiful. We need to make Thunderbird in a way that appeals to the new generation, which remove the old schemes and, and clunkiness and the old approach of basically like a Microsoft Word and 97 application. And this is what Thunderbird looked like the first time I opened it a couple of years ago. Uh, and on macOS, it looks better than on <laughs> Linux, <laughs> uh, at least it looked better, but it was kind of, yeah, it was kind of shocking, as I said here, to put it nicely, my first reaction of using Thunder was very far from beautiful and easy, it was kind of like, whoa, what is this? Uh, and here I talk about all the issues and the problems that I encounter, the fact that a lot of like pretty much Thunderbird looked like a patchwork of different things, different sections behaved in different ways. And it was very, very strange to use. Um, also, I'm on a new uh, VPS provider, Volter. If you can click on this link, that will be extremely helpful. Uh, but yeah, uh, so my first impact was like, okay, let's just redesign everything and let's, let's create something that it's more modern and then it follows some design standards and these are a couple of mock-ups that I did at the beginning trying to uh, make it look more more modern, more refined with much more breathing room, white space uh, and here an example if you have a lot of folders, a lot of, of, um, of messages and try to implement some nice little things uh, and the community didn't like it that much. <laughs> a lot of people were very angry and very upset uh, but then I show 
all the improvements that we've been doing, like how we improve Thunderbird to respect the desktop environment, to respect your uh, primary colors and try to integrate better, uh, how we polish it, uh, the, all the new implementations. You remember we were, I showed it probably in the first live streaming here, the work that I was doing on the folders pane to implement multiple folders. These are the mockups and now it's implemented. All the work that I did on the attachment pane here, uh, the attachment um, and the message compose, uh, the new um, account central, like welcome page of Thunderbird. So I give a little, and the improvements of the dark mode because dark mode is all the rage. Um, so, uh, oh, Jeff, thank you. <laughs> uh, thank you so much, Jeff. Um, so there've been some, some defeats and some victories, uh, some bad days, some good days. And I give an overview here and all the things that we're doing in the future. Uh, some of you really liked these initial mockups, which surprised me. Uh, from these initial mockups, I will tell you that a lot of, a couple, a bunch of things um, will transition to the initial mockups. In fact, also the, um, yeah, the, 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 the calendar things. Uh, we will implement, like, first of all, I implemented the icons, which they look fantastic, in my opinion, and you can customize the colors of the icons. We will also implement these sort of, like, spaces toolbar to the left, which instead of having uh, multiple buttons on the toolbar, some buttons, they open a pop-up, some buttons open a tab, some buttons that do, don't do anything, they open a drop-down. Uh, the, the idea, the approach here is to put all those spaces, so your emails, your homepage, your calendar, your task, your chat, your contact, your address book, everything that, that opens into a tab will be listed as a primary space, as a primary access point in the spatial toolbar that will be customizable. You will be able to reorder these things, uh, collapse it if you want. I don't think I have a screenshot for collapse it, but you can, with this little icon down here, you can collapse it, uh, remove it if you don't like it. So um, yeah, there are a lot of things. Also the improvement to the today pane, I want to work in it. Uh, we did some improvements to the message. It's not there yet the message thread, but also the header here uh, will do these redesign improvements. So the 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 thing is that the complete redesign was very impactful. It was very like disruptive because it's completely different, and a lot of users, especially seasoned users, didn't like it because it was like, no, this is too much. This is drastically changes everything, and I don't like it. But slowly implementing bits and pieces and slowly improving small portions that we can give the users the time to get used to it and then realize that, oh, this redesign or this new approach, actually it's better because I like it. So small victories and small sections, but yeah, there's a, if you didn't read these uh, blog posts, it's the link in the description down this video. So you can click on it and just have a chuckle if you want. Um, moving on more design stuff. And I'm so excited about it because I uh, redesigned the entire uh, account central creation and we started this work, we started the work on the uh, last live stream, on a couple of live streamings ago. And I, um, actually, let me read some comments before we continue. Um, Avery said we are close to 20 degrees. Holy cow, it's warm. Uh, hey, Rankmar, hello. Uh, Jeff said that I thought it looked great, so don't give up. I will never give up. Uh, Nasty Gamer also thought they were great. Thank you so much, Nasty Gamer, as well. Uh, that Anonigi, that Anonigi. <laughs> I always mispronounce your uh, handler, um, your uh, YouTube handle. Finally caught you on another stream. Haha, <laughs> hey, I'm glad you caught me. And Danny, uh, did you have the chance to talk with the Firefox add-on team about your spacebar idea that could be based on the toolbar API proposal? No. I had no idea they had a toolbar API proposal things, but I will definitely get in contact. Thank you, Danny. 
uh, if you can write me on Matrix and, and, and give me a, a ping on where I could write to them, that would be awesome, which is, um, which is great. <laughs> Yeah, one yeah, one thing that I would love to is not reinvent the wheel all the time. So if something comes um, from Firefox and we have direct access to some Firefox APIs and stuff like that, that would be awesome. So we can better implement things without yeah reinventing the wheel and without needing to support all these things that we implementing. So it's good. Let me get a sip of tea. Whoa, it's hot it's too hot okay whoa my headache is increasing <laughs> during doing a live a live streaming with a migraine is not good for your migraine but anyway moving on the work that i did in the past few weeks was continuing the initial work that we started I think we started it together doing a live streaming uh, of the redesign of the account central or like the, the account hub. When you create, when you open Thunderbird for the first time and you have to set up your account, the current setup, it's very clunky, it's very bad. You can give it a try if you want. It's it's not terrible, but it's it just, just compressed into a dialogue and you don't have many choices or not much help, but you're not guided through the process. You're kind of like, add your information, we try to do something, if something goes wrong, we open the settings and it's just bloated inside the dialog. But this is the idea here. We have the idea, how do I hide these things from here? Yeah, okay. The idea here is that first we move it into a tab. We move it into a tab, we have all the space in the world to give you a little bit of introduction, give you helpful links if you're worried about sharing your information. And then we can use like a more regular HTML approach for like uh, setting up your things with a regular form fields that can give you better feedback. It's not cramped into a dialogue, so it's... Um, it's good. Uh, I think it's good. But yeah, this is the first step. You click on that and you continue. The second step is we start searching for your, uh, looking out for your configuration. We have an autoconfig file. We have the access to the Mozilla ISPDB, uh, so Internet Service Provider Database, which returns the proper information. So we don't ask the user, hey, insert all your information. We do it for you. And what we do it, another, small things that it seems it's kind of like trivial it's very it's just more style than than actual usability but using some small images iconography and illustrations to help the users during this process so since we're looking and it's going to take a few seconds we put a slog uh, like a sloth there uh, to show hey we're kind of slow and it's taking a little bit of time so chill hang out there it's useless from like a coding point of view from a like a development point of view but it's nice for the user it helps guiding the user and feeling a little bit more at ease because some users especially non-technical user doing these things it's it's dangerous it's not dangerous it's scary it's not comfortable. Like I'm typing my information. It's looking for a configuration. Oh my God, something bad is going to happen. Or I don't know. It's going to ask me some technical question, which I have no idea how to answer. So this is like, it's, it helps the user uh, through the process. <coughs> oh God. Oh. <coughs> Choking on my own saliva. Yeah, that's the best live streaming thing ever. Wow, what a day. Uh, the next step is um, if we find a good configuration, we uh, return uh, the two options that you can have or more options if you're using, for example, an exchange, um, an Outlook exchange uh, email address or uh, a, an exchange server. Uh, we offer the exchange options down there. But here we uh, give you a big fat green uh, successful notification that helps you say, hey, we found your stuff. Do you want to select the protocol automatically? You want to select IMAP, POP3? We uh, return all the basic information that you might need to know or maybe not, but we tell you, hey, this is an IMAP incoming with SSL. So 
it's secure uh, the outgoing SMTP server and this is your username that is the same username that you use for your email your email information since you already typed your email your name and your password and we kind of confirmed quote unquote that they're correct we collapse them you can still click edit and expand again that form but if you don't need to uh, constantly edit those the information it's kind of useless having that form always there occupying a lot of space and here we can use this section also to guide the user and help them because these might be scary for someone like what imap pop3 exchange like what, what what should i pick like what's keep your folders and emails synced on your server this might be okay i understand this as a regular user that uses emails and knows a bunch of things but what should i do i keep my emails on the server or i download them on my computer what's the best solution so here we can use this space to return some quick links support documentations and support forums to guide the user throughout this process if the user is savvy and that now these set up i don't like this i want to change the port i want to change things because I want to do things manually they can click on configure manually and enter the manual configuration manual configuration is very tricky because there are a lot of things that you can change especially in the manual configuration you're able to change both incoming and outgoing server and both of those they pretty much have the same type of uh settings except for the server type for the outgoing server you cannot change the outgoing is just smtp you cannot change to another server but you can for both incoming and outgoing you can define the server name the port number the type of connection what type of authentication and the username if it's different so um i decided to put it in two different tabs because listing them all together it's just too much it's just not not good and i can show you uh, how it looks on the current Thunderbird McRun. Um, skip integration here. For example, if we do something like this in email, this is the email configuration right now. It's in dialogue, it's not great. So if I add something, for example, uh, blah, 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 and I click configure manually, we have everything cramped here. So we have the incoming and outgoing. The incoming protocol, you can change it. The server, it's written here. And here we have this weird widget that I never liked it. And it's also an accessibility nightmare. This widget allows you to, it's called an editable, editable menu list, like a menu list that can be edited. It allows you to write a custom string like a, a simple field, but also as a menu list underneath. And you can click and select what you want if it's part of, okay, let's select something by default. And if you select it, it turns into a menu list, but you can see already a bunch of problems. The menu list sometimes has this double uh, chevron here because of the styling. But then if you select something custom, it converts it back to an editable field, it's not it's not great. And yeah, it's it's very cramped. And if a user has a smaller uh, dialogue, look how like we don't have space to do anything here. So that's um, also a bunch of issues here. <laughs> great, uh, we need to fix that. But this is the solution. Way more breathing room, easier stuff to, to understand. We can use, we have also the space to guide the users, select the port number. If they want to change it, they can select some predefined port or click on the radio button and enable the um, the text field, the, the num number input, and this will be disabled so they can write whatever they want. But this is way more organized, more breathing room. We're not cramped. It's easier to maintain. And, good stuff uh, next up if the user changes something and mess something up and we are unable to log in to their service or their password is incorrect we show a big red uh, warning sign and look how cute is this thing all these illustrations are from mozilla from firefox firefox has all these illustrations inside and they're used in some sections but I've never seen them. <laughs> it makes me upset because they're super cute and I want to use them in Thunderbird as well. But yeah, so if there's an error, we 
return to the initial form and we open up everything. We don't want to return an error and then keep the form collapsed, all the selection collapsed or whatever. Everything is open so you can change things. There's also uh, an idea or a, a, a request from one of our developers that says, but why we're asking for the password at the beginning if you we don't use the password until the end? So that would be nice maybe at the beginning to just ask your email, just answer, insert your email. And then when the configuration is done, we ask you to add your name or at the end, just at the end, insert your password because now we're trying to log in. So if we have an error, the login, uh, we just show the password field because that's what the mistake comes from. We cannot log into your service. Um, Okay, Danny just wrote a bad news, but I gotta read it later. Great. Uh, okay, so um, and then we show uh, the selection. Of course, if the user pre-selected a protocol, we show that one at the bottom. Or if your user clicked uh, configure manually, we show the open uh, form of all the manual configuration. If everything goes correctly, we have a successful login and the successful login uh, um, up until now what we do if it's successful we just close the dialog we open th thunderbird or we we start like loading your folders we trigger everything and it's good uh, the idea here is doing the same but in the background without the user so seeing it so if the account is successful now in the background we're gonna load the UI, we're going to load your folders, we're going to load like slowly with a delay asynchronously, maybe in a multi-threading uh, scenario, so in another thread, so it doesn't affect the main thread or vice versa. And in these uh, situations, we can offer some quick links because after you set up your account successfully, what do you want to do? You want to change some settings in your account settings. You want to add a signature maybe, which is the most standard things, or you want to enable the end-to-end -end encryption, download extra dictionaries. If you're not like a native English speaker, you're planning to write it in another language. Or also something very, very important, something very um, uh, handy for a user is that if, for example, you connect your Gmail account or your Outlook account to Thunderbird, those services, they 99%, 99.9% of the time, they come with uh, calendars or address books, something like other remote services connected. So if you have your remote calendars or your remote address book, we can auto detect those and ask you, hey, uh, these things are uh, linked to your email address. You want to auto set them up? You want to auto configure it? And if you click here, we can start the auto configuration process of importing your calendars and syncing your calendar, syncing your address book without you, you doing it manually because right now, after you set up your email, then you have to close it. You have to open the calendar dialog, create a new calendar, uh, insert your the URL of your calendar location, which like ha where, like how, no one knows that. Uh, the first time I did that also, I was like, where, what, where do I find my calendar URL? What is that? Um, and we can also, yeah, help the user to set up and auto configure all the extra step. And you can click finish. This will close and open Thunderbird. Or you can, if you have multiple accounts, you can click on it and set up another account, which is fantastic. And then uh, this is something I was working on is the uh, create a new email address. If you don't have an email address, we have some partnerships with a bunch of other uh, providers where you can simply generate buy pay and 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 auto configure your new email address directly into thunderbird without needing to step out of thunderbird go into your email service provider choice setting up your email and then get all the information we do everything automatically so this is the new workflow which it seems to have been mostly approved by a lot of other developers so i'm gonna be uh, i'm gonna start working on this from next week for, so probably from the next live streaming we are going to start coding this but today we need to fix a bunch of bugs because yay bugs <laughs> Uh, first, a little bit of a break, and I'm gonna uh, read some comments here. Uh, 
Uh, Dana Noni G, which programming languages do you like? All of them. <laughs> Dana Noni G, uh, I like PHP, Pala, JavaScript. Uh, that's it. I if I if I say I don't like for C plus plus I don't like it that much I try it and I'm like yeah but yeah it's I'm not I'm not a, like a fanboy and I say oh no PHP is the best language or JavaScript is best like no it's okay every language has its purpose and its utility so it's fine um, Danny caffeine withdrawal ditch your tea and go get a real beverage espresso if I get another espresso. I uh, my stomach will explode. Uh, there was a time like uh, a month ago that I, I was going for five to six espressos per day, <laughs> and I got a massive like heartburn and uh, like an ulcer or something. Like my stomach was burning like hell. So now I drink a couple of coffees per day. That's it, only in the morning and one in after lunch, and then I go on with tea. Or chamomile sometimes. Um, hey, Abhishek, what's up? All good. How are you, man? Um, and then the, the bad news, they just decided to deprecate those illustrations with Proton. Oh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. Okay. Well, those illustrations are freely available, so we're going to steal them and use them in Thunderbird, or we're going to create our own. It would be nice to have... Oh. Whoa. Sorry, it would be nice to have some uh, freedom from the point of view, create our own illustrations, create our own uh, design system from that point of view. Yeah, it would be nice. But let's jump into some coding. So we have a problem here in uh, our latest and greatest Thunderbird uh, release, which you can get if you download a beta or you download nightly. Um, we, uh, we implemented multiple folder modes. So you can uh, uh, see this uh, folder header. You can collapse this folder header if you want, but you can enable multiple folder modes at, uh, at the same time. Right now, my favorite configuration is having all the folders here and then setting up a bunch of favorite folders uh, and then enabling the compact view because without the compact view, uh, the favorite folders always come with the parent folder, but I don't care about that. So compact view, I just want the favorite folders, which is great. Um, we have an option in uh, Thunderbird that allows you to um, compact the folder. And the compacting the folders means that we do some trickery in C++ and we save some space for uh, duplicated messages or we um, like m archive messages that have been there for m a long time we compact and we, we just save some some megabytes for you this is a sort of like a um, heritage from a time like 15 years ago where server space and hard drive space was very expensive we still have these in place, but this compact folder, for example, I have like 300 folders and a, a thousand messages or something. I click compact folder and saved 50 megabytes. So I'm not sure how useful it is, but I'm sure a lot of users will consider this useful. The problem is that uh, if by accident the user selects all folders or like a folder further, so these are rows that are fake rows that behaves as uh, folder mode headers. So it splits the different folder modes. But because this is a whole single widget and it's a, a three XUL three elements, all these, all, even the folder mode headers needs need to be folder rows. But then they style different, they behave different. So if I'm selecting a bunch of things and I accidentally select this, you can see the selection moves, but nothing happens because I'm not actually selecting a proper folder. But if I have these fakely selected and I click File, uh, Compact Folder, it just doesn't do anything and sometimes freezes the UI. I cannot change. Now it does not, but I cannot. Sometimes it freezes everything. I cannot change the folders and it's just a mess. So we need to prevent these file compact folder, compact folders to kick in or to completely ignore 
these folder modes if they are selected. So uh, we can uh, do it. Uh, Avery says, are there plans to add a built-in conversation view akin to what the Thunderbird conversation extension offer? Yes, there are. I don't know when we're going to be able to do it, but yes, it's in place. There's actually a bug that it's assigned to me. <laughs> And it's, I uh, don't remember what it is, but basically the, it's the, uh, we need to redesign and rebuild the UI when you split the, um, the message thread and the message pane into vertical mode. Because right now, if you split into vertical mode, it's just basically the exact same UI and doesn't change anything. But uh, we need to split that and with a vertical folder separation, a folder mode, the folder pane should have enabled built-in the conversation sort of like approach that pretty much all the modern application email clients they have so um, there there's some yeah there are, the, the conversation is there we want to do it 100 percent uh it just takes a long time and we're there are other priorities for now but yeah the short answer is yes <laughs> so sorry for the long answer but anyway uh we have a beautiful bug report uh, made by uh, a, a wonderful a wonderful human being that says unable to switch folders after using file compact folders when a folder mode header is selected so it was confirmed by one of our reviewers and i decided to take care of it right now and let's see what's gonna happen. So I know that uh, that method calls a function or like that button calls a function called uh, um, compact all folders, something like that. Compact folders and let's remove the, yes, there you go. We have this method compact all folders for account. And here what we're doing, we are literally grabbing or if a folder has, pa has been passed to the method, um, we use that. Or if this is null, we fetch all the currently selected folder, folders, then we loop through them and we trigger the compact all of each folder. And the compact all method is a C++ method that oops don't change it <laughs> it's a c++ method that it's part of the message folder uh object but as i said the folder modes they're not actual message folder objects they're fake uh so we need to exclude them from this loop and in order to do that first of all i want to see i want to be sure that this is the actual method that is getting uh called so um this is the brutalest thing ever here. Actually, before doing that, maybe we should open a new uh, patch <laughs> to not write it directly on master on the main branch. Do we have everything here? Yes, we do. So here I need to copy these bug number. HQ new uh, with a message bug. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, exclude folder mode header headers from the compacting compacting method yeah we can we can change this uh review i don't know who i'm gonna ask the review to so for now uh folder mode uh, folder compacts header folder compact header let's let's call it that way who cares we have it here perfect now we can start messing up with the code and it's fine here uh, doo -doo -doo. let's compile these make build and let's see if it's the right location. Not exit, run TB. 
Okay, so if I select this and I got my terminal there and I do file compact folder, yes, it's that method. Okay, perfect. That's what we wanted. So here, first of all, uh, this is okay. Or we have a folder or we get all the folder, but this loop, it's old as hell. We don't want to do this for loop. We want to do a uh, for let folder of folders because this is a proper list and then we can do this we can check uh, the folder uh, compact all and then we can pass the null and then the message window object and then the folder server type equal imap or let's copy this so we can get folder server type Oh, we could do something like this. Uh, I am app and NTP includes folder server type. So we have an array of strings with I'm an NTT and NTP which is a, a, a newsletter, something, something. Uh, if the folder server types includes any of these, um, I mean, does the include returns through if includes all of them or any of them? We can check it out. But before doing this loop, so this is uh, the same exact thing, but instead of using these uh, in incremental uh, integer, we are just actually looping through all the folders. But while we loop through all the folders, we need to check if uh, the folder has a mode. And if the folder has a mode, continue. Oof, right, learn how to write continue. So, and we can write a comment here for other developers that might not know why we're doing this. Uh, skip uh, this loop if the selected folder is a folder mode header. Because the mode thing, it's only available in the folder mode header object. Uh, if I search it for this mode equal mode. So the FT, FTV item header is the actual object prototype that we created to generate a folder mode header. And the mode is only available in these. So we're getting the mode and return the, the actual mode. And the mode might be, uh, let's check it out. Like the mode is all folders or unread or favorite or recent or smart. Like these are the folder modes that we have enabled. So. By checking if our code has, uh, what is it? Doo, doo, doo. Checking if our code has a folder mode, uh, it means that this is a folder mode and we shouldn't do anything, right? Okay. Then before doing this, let's check if this is Trudy or falsy. Does it make sense what I'm doing? Maybe not. Maybe I'm doing everything wrong, but we're probably fixing these things. So uh, let's hope for it. Okay, so this one should be, if I do file, compact files, now I should have true because it has uh, IMAP. This was is an NNTP blah, blah, blah folder that I don't wanna download anything, but if I do file, uh, compact folder is disabled because it's an NNTP folder, uh, file, compact folder, that's good. 
inbox trash inbox file okay so if i do the spam folder which i'm gonna get a million different emails of spam yeah file comfort folder this should be uh, true as well yeah it seems seems correct empty junk yeah thank you okay so seems to be correct so now we can let it run properly we can delete these and just as a test we can say uh, log uh, skip we can check if the code is actually skipping this folder mode right right guys or girls right everyone am i doing this wrong <laughs> help me out here okay uh, so we got this uh, if i the inbox and if i compact folder uh is compacting you can see here is blah blah blah, blah connecting opening compacting compacting archive blah, blah blah and i can still change my things while this does the magic in the background which is good done perfect now if i select this and do file uh comfort folder nothing happens here and i should have uh i don't have a skip oh why don't i have a skip Ha ha ha. Ha ha ha. Okay, let's do this. Folder mode. Let's see if we get something. You should skip it. No. Uh, team says surprised to see so much is in JavaScript. Thunderbird is so native. Yes, Thunderbird is mostly built in JavaScript. There's a lot of there's a bunch of C plus plus and C plus plus and Rust in it, but Thunderbird is a, is a layer on top of Firefox. So Firefox is a browser built in uh, C plus plus and Rust. Thunderbird lives on top of the browser, so we can run JavaScript natively. So it's kind of like Electron, but better <laughs> because we use the render engine of Firefox, which is faster <laughs> than the Chromium or Chrome, whatever, uh, of all the Electron shenanigans. Uh, let's see if we actually get something. File, uh, compact folder. Okay, so it shouldn't doesn't do anything here interesting doesn't do anything unless uh, I have more selected void Okay, because I have one single folder and doesn't have a thing. Okay, so if I select one, two, three, should exclude from the selection uh, comfort folders. And then, okay, because I have, oh, I have two, three folders selected. What? Oh no, sorry. The first void was the first one. So I have only two folders selected. Okay, so the it's excluded from the selection because we're already excluding it from the selection. So the get selected folders, uh, folders, where are we calling this? Uh, compact all folders account. Compact folder. So this is never passed, I guess. Get selected folders. Where are we getting the selected folder here? 
get selected folders. Where is my get selected folders method? It's here. Selection folder, 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 push folder. Are we excluding? Returns array uh, corresponding to the current selection in the tree selection. Okay, header modes don't have a folder, so we need to exclude it from the selection array in case the user selects all three items or selection range. So we're e already excluding the folder. Oh, this is interesting. So they're experiencing an issue that I'm not experiencing. We can do something like that. Let's check the folder URI so we can actually see what type of folder we selected. Yeah, Jeff, um, I was that was interesting. So, uh, actually, let me check the um, the method here because this feels the compact folder method we are disabling it is command enabled uh, cam compact all folder is oof yeah that's a that's a very valid point i was i was actually thinking the same but i said i don't want to deal with that right now but it's a good point because it feels strange for for nntp we are disabling this thing can compact folders on server folders is common enable what is this why a folder has is common enable oh my god it's coming from c plus plus yuck yuck <laughs> so it's strange though because that means that these is common enable should return false if the folder is selected if the folder mode is selected but when the folder mode is selected we're not actually changing the selection so it remains selected the same folder that it's it was selected before right right nope okay let me check this can an NNTP server be compacted or is not a thing at all? I don't think it's a thing. I think it shouldn't be, right? Okay, so if I click here and I click uh, compact folder, nothing happens because we don't have any folder selected. So what's this bug about so if I have three folders and I do file compact folder I should have yeah these are the the two URL the only two select for even I selected here for your folder so it doesn't make sense and these shouldn't get stuck right right
be something like this, just a fail safe, but this doesn't make sense. So, enable folder pane toolbar. Okay, enable a second type of folder, favorites. Click on all folders, file compact folder, click any folder. Master list does not change, must restart Thunderbird. Etc. There's a count by many items should probably be disabled when folder type is focused. Focused? Uh, I would have thought you could compact the local folder after deletion or something. You could output the folder server time. See if they get any on an IMAP, maybe? Yeah, true. Yeah, you can do that. But I'm trying to understand these bug reports because I cannot reproduce these. Right click on all folders. No action needs to be selected. Still nothing in error console. Somehow I managed in one iteration to get folder switching to work again without restarting. It didn't involve creating a new message. Right click on an account and pick new folder, which needs to consistently reverse the folder, which is problem. Ah, uh, Wayne, I don't believe you. Wayne, are you <laughs> are you here, Wayne? I don't believe you. <laughs> that uh, Jack. Yeah, let's. Ah, uh, that's. Oh, that's so annoying when you cannot reproduce a bug. I mean, because it makes sense, right? From the selected folders, we're excluding all the folders. So the only problem we might have is that if we are passing a folder directly from the compatible folders account, but globally, the compatible folders account, it's never called with a folder itself. Never. So I don't understand if this is still in, this is a leftover from an old implementation. Ah, it's annoying. This is annoying. Okay, let's give it a try. So let me select like the inbox, actually the draft sent, and I wanna select a couple of local folders like the trash, outbooks, and test. And I wanna try to select these also. And let's give it a try. Let's see what output we get. This is working. And if I select something, it changes the list, even if it's working in the background. And then here we get I'm up, I'm up, none. So the folders, it's none and can be compacted. But as soon as we check an NNTP account, the compact folder is disabled. So cannot be compact. It's because these specific newsletter account cannot be compact, or like newsletter folder cannot be compacted, or some other feeds can be compact. It's this, right? Okay. RSS. Woof. This is a bit beyond me. So I think we should enable these also. Wait a sec. First of all, what is this condition needed for in the C++ code? Compact offline also. Okay, this controls whether we compile all offline stores as well. That's why we're checking if this is an IMAP account because we want to comp. Uh, what does it mean, compact offline? <laughs> ah, I hate this. Not knowing what I'm doing. No, is the message folder IMAP message folder here? Yeah, compact offline. Offline folder, get root folder, compact offline, pen element, modify. Off 
find folder array and then what do we do compact folders in the folder compactor offline folder array yeah I guess we can mm, yeah I guess it makes sense so why we ignore RSS feed because we cannot Oof. and none So what what's the compact mode like what what does the compact do for local folders at this point? Huh? Huh? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> wow. It's sketchy. Okay, let's do something like that. <sighs> Let's try to simulate something like this first of all. Let's recompile it for a second. Let's try to just do a one right click and see if something go something's going on. Run TV. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, a single right click to this, and then file, then compact folders. Nothing happens. Nothing happens because not a sing like no folders is selected. Oh, 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 I was able to reproduce it. Okay, gotcha. Okay. 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 I was able to reproduce it finally. I don't know if I can share links as well. Yes, I can share links. Jeff, is Dark Trojan, is it you? Are you snooping on my <laughs> live stream here to see how bad I am at coding? But I was able to reproduce it. So it works with the right click, not with the left click. Interesting. What the hell? Why? So, ah, first, first, uh, da, 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 I was able to reproduce it. This is, this is exciting. When I'm able to reproduce a bug, it's exciting. Okay, so, compatible folders here. Uh, log, uh, show me here, show me, show me that this is getting cold. This is getting cold. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. I'm loving it. We're going to continue this live streaming until we fix this shit. <laughs> yes, I'm not interrupting right now. Probably I'm going to take a break to pee, but I will fix this live. This is not... God damn it, we're doing it live! Okay, right click, file, compact folders. Okay, this is stuck. Okay, and then we got this. So it's calling. So this is... This is doing something. This is doing something to the folders mac build you're not a random user jeff i don't believe you you're someone else disguised as a random user an extremely knowledgeable a random user but yeah yeah keep your secrets <laughs> okay gandalf keep your secrets okay right click File, compact folders. Okay, it's whoa. Whoa, wow. Is the right click? It's not the compact folder, it's the right click. Wait, what? What? <laughs> What? What? It's not this. Because this is not doing anything. Wow. Sketchy, okay. Uh, context, context menu, context, uh, messenger, messenger, give me the messenger. 
Messenger.xhtml folder tree. Undrag drag and double click on select context folder pane context. Okay, folder pane context. Where is this? No, this is an extension menu. Is this? Menu pop up TD. Okay, on pop up showing, field folder Spain context menu. Okay. This. So if we return these and we prevent the right click from doing anything, maybe. All right, so if we right click on a folder, this happens. If we right click here, this happens because we are, we disabled that thingy. But then if I, yeah, see, okay. Okay, this is what's happening now, I think. So is this code? I think this is what's happening. These thing, it's causing a shenanigan. Okay, let's return. So if we, re ah, I think is this. Return false. If we return false, uh, we're interrupting. We're not returning anything. But by returning false, I think we are kind of kind of like freezing the UI of the tree for some reason. For whatever reason. Yeah. By returning false, we're freezing the UI when we generate the folder pane context menu. Why? Whoa, what the hell? Whoa. What if you return true? Like, do we have the same outcome? Oh, this is annoying, man. This is annoying. Yeah, if we return true, it just continues and shows the rest settings. It doesn't do anything. Pause on all updates and subscribe, mark compact. Yeah, it continues. So it's that return false. Wow. So because I don't want to deal with this thing, this is getting too hot of end here. I want to do something else. I want to intercept this. Okay, so this first, this is good. We also can skip this and uh, that's actually, I don't know why it is NNTP. Let's keep it like that and then we're going to ask for a review. Maybe there was some reason, but I will investigate that. But this is already uh, a quick improvement. Compatible folders. Okay, we can ignore this because it's the right click. The thing that I want to do here now to prevent this issue, it's a different approach. It's basically preventing any type of focus or selection happening on the folder mode. So even if I right click here, it should immediately go back 
to this because if I do this and then I file a uh, compact folder and then I click oh no no it doesn't matter it doesn't matter yeah right click it's what <sighs> Let's write my findings. Um, wait a right click. It seems that the return falls on the opening of the antics menu, freezes the UI. Regardless if the file compact folders is used. Ah, so annoying. So, so, so annoying. <laughs> oh, okay. Is that compact? Is that compact shit? Fill folder pane context menu. Document pop up node. So it should, it should happen also if multiple rows are not selected. Or no, it shouldn't happen. The, that comment is wrong because if I select multiple things, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so this is what's happening here. I'm getting the folders here. Do not show menu if rows are selected. Mm, do not show menu if no rows are selected. Also this bundle, why it's declared here if we then use it down here what the fuck <laughs> this is terrible <laughs> this you can see how like this old code how it differs from this so here this is what we should hit when we right click on a mode adder because if we do right click here nothing happens yeah if we right click on the mode header here yes and that's where the problems start yeah if we right click again wow something is Open a message. Wow. This is brutal. Pop up target document pop up node. <sighs> wow. This is not, this is not fun. <laughs> this is not fun. 
I don't know what to do here because what it's what it I don't understand what's causing this. Just the fact that we're interrupting the pop up, or is there something else? These methods, first of all, it's just massive. This is oh, this ugh, this is so hard to maintain, of course. Then this thing, oof. Why returning false on? So also these should cause an issue at this point, right? Because we're returning false on a tree column. So if we uh, reveal the uh, toolbars, folder pane toolbars, toolbar layout, folders, uh, folder properties, uh, how do I see the... Uh, 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 folder pane columns. Okay, if I right click on this, no, this doesn't. This doesn't. This goes only the right click on here. Yeah. Only the right click on there. So if I do this, let's give it a try. Let's give it a try. When is this opening the pop up? So if I remove this sh shit, <laughs> all these live streamings are turning slowly turning into me not knowing what I'm doing and just swearing at the camera. <laughs> like, what is this? Yeah, see, if I don't interrupt this. Okay, this is the... Yeah, so if we, if we let it run... It doesn't create any issue. But we cannot let it run because we can't like these mode headers don't have any option. But I guess we could potentially create Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Jeff is right. Simple bug <laughs> equal kettle of worms. Yeah, it's just like you think that it, this is simple. This is easy to fix. And then he goes down into a rabbit hole and you find out that the whole architecture is busted for like whatever, whatever reason. God damn it. <laughs> oh, it's so annoying. Uh, Every is, yes. Confusion is wearing while coding is the norm. Yes. Uh, Socrates. Oh, we have a philosopher here. Thunderbird new, but can I have the folders and email headings down the LHS and the reading pane in the center full size? Oh, you mean like changing the layout of the... Uh, I don't think you have that flexibility in changing the layout. I'm not sure there are um, extensions that might do that, but I don't know. Oof. <sighs> okay. What we need to do here 
is check this. We need to do something like this. First of all, let me check. E target local name. So here we can do something like this, maybe help me with comments. So here we can say that we need to identify if the user right clicked on a folder mode header. But the problem is that the get selected folder excludes the folder mode header. So if we don't have any folders and the user selected um, If the folder, oh, if there are no folders selected and the user clicked on a folder header, we need to do something else. Okay, so here, if the user um, right clicked on, right licked, <laughs> right, right clicked. <laughs> That's what happens when you use the Thunderbird too much. You start right licking. Uh, if the user right clicked on a folder mode header and no other folders are selected, do something else. Let's let's give it a try like that. Okay, because and I wanna just uh, first of all I wanna. I want to check the target here. Log target local name. What is this? Because if the user has multiple folders selected and also accidentally the folder pane selected, that's excluded from the list and the pop up works and it shouldn't freeze the UI. So this is a test that we're doing right now to see. So if I select uh, one, two, three, four, and then I select the folder here. No, control right click doesn't select. Sorry, I, I, I hold control as well. So one, two, three, and then I select this and then I right click. It doesn't matter and is not frozen okay but it's the right click if it's the right click it's in here yeah see it's frozen now so but if the right click it's if i eat one two three boom and i right click it works and it doesn't freeze it so it doesn't matter if i right click so this only happens if i right click on a mode header and no other no other things are selected and i need to like these target i need i need a specific identifier to this target the tree children is just everything is a tree children i need a specific identifier for this target hopefully uh, i think the mode editor has a specific attribute that only is right boom okay so then the inspector, the tree children, tooltip, folder pop up. We have a unique identifier here. No, of course not. This is as generic as hell. But here we have another one and these might have different option. Oh no, of course, they're exactly identical. It doesn't have a source. Oh, God damn it. This is so annoying. How do I distinguish them? Because it's a three children and three children. See, XUL, I, I honestly hate 
XUL. I can't wait to get rid of it entirely and just use standard HTML. Because this is bullshit. <laughs> just wasting time on this. Uh, okay. 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 Mm. So, 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 so. Oh. There has to be something here, otherwise, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Or was that X Men? Apocalypse with Charles Xavier. I don't know what to do. <laughs> um, mm, 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 this is a dead end. This is a dead end. This is a dead end. So if folders length. Oh, wait. Wait. Uh, Jeff, update the bug and assign the bug to someone else. Yes, that's the way to go. <laughs> that would be, yeah, that's the way to go. No, I can do it. I can do it. I think I, I think I know what to do. Or maybe I don't. But... I can do it. I can do it. So when is these folders length equals zero happens? Only if the right click happens on the tree item, but we don't have any folders, right? Does it happen also on an empty space? Like here? No. Because something is selected here. So something is always selected. So the only issue that we have, uh, yes, exactly. It's here. When something is, like we don't have any folder, but an item is selected. And what the hell is selected here? Why it's returning? It's three children. Once again. But this doesn't... What the... No, wait. So, if I select this and I right click on nothing, I still get the trigger that something I click, but this is not frozen. But if I select this and I right click on this, still get the three children thing, but then Oh no, it's not stuck now. But now it's stuck. Why? Oh, this is so fucking random. Oh, this is so random. This is so random. This doesn't make sense. doesn't make sense I have to fix this okay this is gonna take a very long time I thought this was um, <laughs> this was quick fix yeah I thought this was a quick fix Okay. Let's do this. 
I thought this was a quick fix selection folders folder array uh, so we are only pushing if we have a folder so that's completely empty and that's that's right that's right selection range what it's why it's why why mm. Can I set? No, I can't set a new attribute to that thing, right? I cannot set a new attribute to that because if I set a new attribute, it's just part of the JavaScript object. It's not part of the three children. I cannot set a new attribute to the three children, right? Because if I do this, if I search FTV item header here, map, we add this to the map, generate map. Generate map, the generate map here New row map, okay, row map, row map, land tree, invalidate, and then we rebuild it. Yeah, so during rebuild, yeah, we're fucking here. Um, doesn't make sense oh god this is a probably this is the most annoying live streaming you ever watch why are you guys sleeping are you guys eating are you guys laughing or watching netflix what are you guys doing i am baffled by this uh i am stuck it doesn't make sense why the fact that we are not triggering We're not triggering. Um, why the fact that we're not triggering a pop-up is freezing the UI? It's brutal. So, yeah. Uh, creative money. Hey, creative money. Uh, what's up? Why you do work on Thunderbird? Um, because I work on Thunderbird, <laughs> I am a, a Thunderbird developer. I, I think I am a Thunderbird developer. Apparently, after one hour trying to fix this shit, I'm not a Thunderbird developer because I cannot figure these things out. <coughs> anyway, uh, here for the first time watching from Austria. Welcome. Uh, I'm updating to Big Sur and also coding some Java, but it's 8.30 p.m. here in the UK. Oh, yeah. Uh, Big Sur. Good luck with that. I had my fair share of troubles uh, with Big Sur. Oh my god, this is driving me crazy. That doesn't make sense. Because if if I just simply ignore the fact if we don't have any folder selected, don't trigger anything, or like if we don't have any folder selected, just continue, just give me that, that little thing. How, when... We don't have any error, right? 
open a new tab nothing happens because we're not and here continues yeah here get messages opening new tab opening new window. all these things are not working because of course like these is not a real folder but why if we trigger the pop-up then the tree doesn't freeze but if we don't trigger the pop-up on right click the tree freezes Yeah, it's brutal. Um, Creative Money asks, do you get paid for work on Thunderbird? Yes, I'm actually, I'm hired by Thunderbird. I'm a Thunderbird developer full time. Uh, I work on that, I get paid, it's my nine to five job. Yeah. Uh, I know it's open source, but I don't know how the monetary side of open source for Thunderbird works. Would you be nice if you can explain if possible to earn money as open an open source developer? Yes, absolutely. So Thunderbird has a donation based uh, approach. Uh, since Thunderbird is used by 30 million users per month, uh, is it gets a lot of donations, especially by universities and other things that they look for a free open source project that protects privacy and doesn't steal your information and just like that. But as an open source developer, you can get paid by yeah having donations or releasing like. Open source doesn't mean free. You can release your open source project and ask the user to pay like a subscription or to buy your product released at the end. And users do it. It's it's not an alien concept. So yeah, it takes time, takes a lot of work. Thunderbird has been around for like almost 20 years, like 15 plus. So yeah. Um, but yeah, this is driving me insane now. I'm not having fun here. Also here, this is, uh, yeah. But what I don't understand is that if we interrupt this, that we don't have any folder, but we right click on the, empty area. Oh, no, I still, yeah, if we select this, right click on empty air, nothing happens, but this is not frozen. But if we right click here, this is frozen now. Yeah, this doesn't make any sense whatsoever. This is so random. So random. Okay. I'm tired. I guess it's a depressing way of <laughs> concluding a live streaming. Uh, you're very welcome. Um, yeah, Creative Money. I've been... Uh, yeah, Creative Money is writing... A suggestion of yeah that's what I identified I identified this section so when you right click uh, the folder pane context menu gets generated and here we interrupt if we don't have any folder selected uh, just return false and since the folder mode header is not an actual folder we exclude it from the selection we return it here this doesn't create any problem if you don't have any folder selected and you right click on an empty area but if you right click on the folder mode it freezes the ui even if we exclude that folder mode from the list of selection so something is happening somewhere and i need to track it down identify as why the the tree gets frozen when you right click on the folder mode only if you right click on the folder mode why it just gets stuck if we're simply returning here like we do in other scenarios and the other scenarios they don't cause the ui to freeze so the right click on the folder mode uh, 
and if I return false here for everything if I return false for everything mm, yeah <laughs> oof I'm struggling I am struggling it doesn't make sense if I, if I return false for everything we don't have any Okay, there you go. It's the return false. Well, I identified that before as well. Yeah. Is there a return false? No, it's not a return false. Because I'm right clicking and we're not returning anything. And this, oh, multiple right click? Seriously? Because a right click once and this works. Right click twice. What? No, that this is random. I have it on video. You saw it. It was it froze it. Did I accidentally right click on this? Yeah, maybe I had that selected. Yeah. Okay. Right click on a folder and it's frozen. Yeah, right click on the folder mode. Oofty, 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 oofty. Is right click on a folder mode. So is that FTV folder mode? The folder mode. Okay. I will find a solution. And if not, you will see it in the next <laughs> live stream. We will continue next week trying to crack this stuff, which is driving me crazy. Okay. Um, yeah, it's been one hour and a half of these shenanigans. I'm, 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 I'm losing my mind. <laughs> I, I hate this. I don't know why. Okay. Anyway, uh, we're at the end of this. Thank you so much, guys, for watching. Guys and girls, thanks so much, everybody, for watching this. Uh, as I said, there's a link in the description below. You can check uh, my experience on Thunderbird. Or how did it go? I started working on it and all my good stuff. Uh, you can follow me here. Uh, subscribe, leave a like and subscribe and um, you can follow me on Twitter um, that's pretty much it so thank you so much guys for watching and until the no next one, as usual, happy coding and I hope it's going to be happier than what we just saw but yeah, enjoy the rest of the week, bye